Picard, my free class. I'm Vicki Sewell, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Chattanooga, Tennessee. You can follow me on Facebook at Stampin' Chat 30 or email me at stampinchat30 at gmail.com. My April host code is 2JP2AHEG. You can use my handy Shop Now button at the top of this page, and for every $35 of Stampin' Up! products before tax and shipping that you order from me, and be sure to enter this code as you check out. You'll get a chance in a prize drawing that I'll have at the end of April for a Touch of Ink stamp set. So if you miss getting that cute set during celebration, you'll get another opportunity. You must enter this host code, though, as you're checking out to be eligible. I have ordered new annual catalogs for all my customers who have placed orders with me in the last year. Uh, but if you're interested in ordering a catalog, you can click on the Shop Now button and order one through the website, or you can contact me. Today I'm going to show you some fun Easter treat boxes that you can make. To, they make great table decorations or favors. The first one I'm going to show you is made with, I'm going to look at this one first. You, it's made with, I'll move these out of the way. These are made with this stamp set, or these dies. They're called, it's called the Mini Curvy Keepsake Box. That's a long name. But when you open up the dies, they look like this. And this is the main die that we're that I would use, but it has these other cute little dies that come with it that you can use as tags. So that's the die that I put through the cut and emboss machine. And when you do that, you can see I just laid it on a piece of uh, six by six paper. I laid it on here and ran it through the machine. I cut out two little wings. If you look through your other stamp sets that you have, you'll probably find something that will work for wings for the little chickadee. I used uh, a die from the Painted Poppies that looks like, right here, looks like a leaf. And I just cut off the stem of the leaf and used those. Later on in the video, while I've got this out, I'm gonna show you later on in the video, I used a die for the eyelashes on one of the bunnies from this little die right here. So look through your dies and see what you have. You might have something that works. Once you cut out, run that through your cut and emboss machine, you'll end up with this. And all you do is fold it up. It's already scored for you. This die is really great. It cuts and scores all at the same time. So you just fold it up like that. And then I'm gonna use my bone folder I'm just going to put a little curve on it with my bone folder like that. Really easy to do. And there is a score line here, so I'm going to score that back on the handle. Super quick and easy. Fold this up, pinch them together, cross that over, and this is a great size if you like these Ferrero Rocher candies. 
they just fit inside here. Of course, there are lots of other candies that'll fit too. Hershey Kisses. Then you just push down a little bit, pop that over like that. And you have a cute little box. Of course, you'll want to decorate it. Here's the one I decorated like a chick. Um, handy dandy hole punchers are great tools to punch the eyes. I just cut the beak out of a little strip, uh, folded a little strip of orange and cut out the beak. I had cut out two little feet to add to the bottom. Of course, I've already told you about the wings. So you get a cute little chick for Easter. Here's the bunny. These are punched out eyes. Um, Stampin' Up! has had, they don't, don't carry it right now, but they did have a half inch circle punch. You could use that. Or um, if you have an older punch, called uh, the Owl Builder. It has lots of circles on it. It also has a tiny heart. The Dog Punch, if you have that one, has a tiny heart on it. Or you can use the Stitched Be Mine dies if you have that. Um, it has a heart on it. So those are just some things uh, to look around in your craft stash and see what you have. The ears were made with the layering oval dies but you could also use your oval punch to make those ears. Speaking of all these products, I wanted to take a minute and show you that some of these really useful products are going to be retiring soon. They're on the retiring list. This is the annual catalog uh, 2020 to 21. On page 81, the layering oval dies is retiring. I can't imagine what we're gonna do without those. Um, the mini curvy keepsake, that's the die that I just showed you that cuts out this cute little box, is um, retiring and it's on sale 20% off. Um, the Be Mine stitch dies that cuts out lots of hearts uh, is on sale 40% off, so it's $21. And the stitched shape dies they're also retiring. So those are some basic favorite things that are retiring uh, that you might wanna put on your wish list and get those before they sell out. All right, let's move on to this cute little box. This cute little box has a surprise. When you pull the drawer, let me see if I can hold it up so you can see it. When you pull the drawer, the little bunny pops out. This is made with the Springtime Joy set. And I did some cards in an earlier uh, Coffee and a Card with that set. But this is just another way to use it. So I'm going to show you how to make this little box. Boxes are really easy to make uh, and fun. The first thing you're gonna need is a square that's four and a half by four inches. And we're gonna score that square on all sides at one inch. So there's a scoring uh, tool on the trimmer, and I just like to use it. I usually have this trimmer out, it's very handy to use. So I'm just gonna put it up at the edge. Here's the one inch mark, and I'm just gonna pull it down and score it. I'm gonna turn it, make sure I have it at the one inch edge, score it again. Notice I'm using the light gray blade, that's the blade that scores. I'm gonna turn it again at one inch, score again. And one last time, scoring just like that. Next, we're gonna cut out a little bit. We're gonna just pick one direction to cut. So I'm gonna cut on this side. 
If you're a seamstress, you know that things fold easier if you just cut out a little bit. There's just a little bit that I'm cutting out there. Just trim that, like trimming a seam, just a little bit. I'm gonna do the same here. I don't know how many of you like to make favors. I love to make favors. They're so handy to make for uh, children's parties or just to set on your table and decorate your table when you have family over for Easter. I know that when I was a child um, in Sunday school, we would often make favors to take to hospitals. They don't hospitals don't allow that too often anymore. But you can uh, make favors for nursing homes and assisted living facilities. They like to get those, especially if the candy's uh, pre wrapped. All right, so we've just cut out a little bit there, and I'm gonna. Uh, Fold it on all the score lines. Go ahead and fold those. If you like, you can use your bone folder to smooth out those folds. Make them nice and crisp. All right, so we're gonna fold those in and, and fold that up. You can use tear and tape. You can use glue. Anything that's um, strong. You can use some um, seal if you like. I'll just put a little piece of tear and tape right there. And a little piece of tear and tape right here. And that comes right off. We'll fold those in. Fold this up. And there we go. Got the bottom of the box made. Now we have a four and a half. This is probably hard to see, but this is four and a half by one half inch of clear acetate. You can order that from Stampin' Up. And I scored it at two and a half inches. So it's very hard to see, but there's a little fold right there. And we're gonna put that down in the box like this so we can create the pop-up bunny. It should fit just like that. I'm gonna put some um, just glue dots on there. I want to make sure I get them on the right side. Put one right there. Oh, didn't come off. Stop it off a little bit. And one in the middle. And one right at the beginning. So we'll just place that down in there, kind of in the middle like so. Alright, then it's hard to see, but there's a little piece of acetate sticking up right here. And that's where we're going to put our little uh, bunny. I've already cut out, this is from the Springtime Joy, I've already colored it and cut it out. Um, added some little pearls to the crown. And I'm going to just put her right there where she'll pop up. And I think I'll put her on with glue dots also. I think 
three will do it. Right down the middle. There we go. And we'll just add her. Uh oh. She's already sticking. Didn't get her centered the way I wanted her. Try that again. Make sure I get it centered first before I get close. There we go. All right, there she is. She's ready to pop up and surprise everybody. All right, for the next part, you'll need um, a piece of cardstock that's six and three fourths by two and a half inches. And we're going to score it. Let me move these out of the way so I can get my trimmer up here. I'm gonna set this right over here where we can see it while we're scoring. We're gonna score it two and one sixteenth. And don't be afraid of the little tiny fractions. Two and one sixteenth. The sixteenth is the tiniest mark right there. So I'm going to put it on two. Pull it down where you can see it. I'm going to put it on two. And then I'm just going to scoot it over just till the very next mark. That's one sixteenth. That next mark is one sixteenth. I'm going to make sure I'm using my light gray blade and score. The next um, one is three and one sixteenth, so there's three and a sixteenth is the very next tiny little tick mark. So I score that. The next one is five and one eighth, so I'm going to move over here. Uh, one eighth is two marks over. It's the little bit larger mark. There's the smaller one is the sixteenth, and the larger mark is an eighth. So I'll move over to that larger one and score there. And the last one is sixth and one, six and one eighth. So I'll score there. And that's gonna make our box cover. So again, we're gonna fold those down. Use that bone folder to get everything nice and crisp. And all we're going to do is um, add a little bit of tear and tape right here on the box cover. Put it right at that edge. If you get a little long, the nice thing about tear and tape is you just tear that right off. There you go. And we'll match that up like so. Oh, you're quite good as well as I like it. There we go. All right. So here's our box cover. And we're going to decorate that box cover next. Here's the little lamb from the Springtime Joy. You'll need a piece of designer paper that matches your cardstock. Cut two and three eighths inch by one and seven eighths inch. We'll just put a little seal on that. So I can get it started. There we go. Or you could use glue, whatever you have handy. Let's see. I want to make sure my seam is on the bottom. And we'll add that to the top for some decoration. I'm going to attach the little lamb with some dimensionals. That's always fun to pop them up. Just 
like that. And of course you could use any decorations that you have that are Eastery in your stash. This little box I think you could make uh, just with cardstock. I don't think you have to have any special sets for it. All right, she's really cute. Now, there is one more thing we need to do. And I happen to have a hole punch. Hole punches are just standard practice at my house. We just have all kinds. And this one is a smaller size. Um, and I'm going to go in as far as I can go with it. If you don't have a hole punch, you could use your take your pick tool and kind of work it in carefully to make a hole. But if you have hole punches are pretty standard. If you have one around, you might could use that. I'm just gonna, and I notice I've laid down the bunny because I don't want to hurt our bunny that's in there. Okay, so I'm just going to punch a little hole. And I've taken ribbon and I just folded the ribbon over and uh, like that and just tied a knot. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just. I'm going to go ahead, I wanted to show you that before I cut it. I'm going to cut it really short down here. And what I'm going to do is just work an edge of this ribbon through that hole so that there's something to pull the drawer open with. Just find some it need, probably needs to be a thin ribbon so you can get it through that hole, not a thick one, but you know, you can see this is a pretty uh, loosely woven ribbon. All right, so I've got that there, and uh, if you want that to lay over to the side so the bunny will pop up more, you can put a little glue dot right there to get that bunny to pop up all the way. So we'll just uh, work on that a minute. We really want the bunny to be a surprise. So I'll just put that down there and fold that over and stick it down. Now our bunny pops up and there's a nice little handle to pull the drawer. Then you can um, fill it with jelly beans. Make sure that he's going to slip in there. Just kind of work him in. There we go. Oh, forgot to lay him down. And there you go. Cute little box. Fun little surprise inside. Speaking of the jelly beans, a friend of mine shared this poem about jelly beans, and if you have children or grandchildren in your life, you might enjoy this, uh, or maybe you teach a Sunday school class, you might enjoy this poem. Um, the jelly beans, red is for the blood he gave, green is for the grass he made, yellow is for his sun so bright, orange is for the edge of night, black is for the sins we've made, white is for the grace he gave, purple is for his hours of sorrow, Pink is for our new tomorrow. May every day be Easter in your heart. May the joy you feel on Easter morning be the joy of each day of your life. I don't know who wrote that poem. A friend just found it in her mother's drawer and she shared it with me. I will put it on my uh, website though. If you'd like to include it, you could type it uh, kind of small and put it inside with uh, each color of the jelly beans and type up that poem kind of small and put it inside for a nice little uh, treat for children on Easter. All right, let's look at this one. This one is the easiest to make. 
I used the uh, layering ovals to make it. Um, well, I actually used the stitched ovals. You could also use the layering ovals. And uh, this is the one that you probably have. You'll need two of the stitched ovals. I used the largest oval in the set and I used the smallest oval in the set. This one I stamped with a Welcome Spring from the Springtime Joy set. Um, I'm going to make a little boy bunny and I stamped him with Happy Easter. And the Happy Easter is from the A Wish for Everything stamp set. So, um, you do have to score uh, the, the large oval. So we'll bring our scoring tool in. We're gonna score the large ovals. You're just gonna put them on the scoring tool as evenly as you can. We want to score them at about an inch. So here's my inch mark, and we want to score at about an inch across there. And we want to do this the other one the same way. Try to get it even up here and even over here, and we'll score the same way. That's really all there is to it. Fold that in and fold that in. Add a little bit of glue here, right in the center. Not going all the way to the edges because of the oval shape. I don't think the um, I don't think it'll cover. And then you're going to set one oval on top of the other oval, like so, kind of centered like that. That gives you at least an inch in the middle for candy. Uh, if you have a wider candy bar, wider piece of candy, then you would just score a little further down, maybe one and an eighth of an inch on each side. Uh, you just kind of have to measure the candy and see. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add the ears. Oh, before I add the ears, I might, if you want to give your ears a little curl, you might use your bone folder. It works great to add a little curl to flowers, ears, all those things. Let's see. I think I'm going to stick it to the front like that. Just a little bit of glue and hold that for a minute or two. There we go. All right, so I have a little girl bunny. This one, I'm going to make a little boy bunny. Um, you notice she I put eyelashes on her. That was such fun. This is from the Painted Poppies set. So look at your flower sets. There might be in your stamp set something that you could use for little eyelashes. The heart came from the Stitched Be Mine dies. They're retiring. Don't let them get away. If you don't have some, it's a great set. All right, and um, the eyes, like I said, you can use any hole punch. Uh, you can use, uh, there may be, oh, the heart could be up from the dog set. There's a, there's a heart on the dog punch. Just kind of look around at your craft stash and see what you have. So, 
I'm not going to put eyelashes on such defined eyelashes on this little guy. There we go, whoops. All right. And um, I'll be the first to admit that I'm not a great whisker drawer. Whiskers are hard for me, but um, I'm going to attempt anyway. I'm trying to stay out of the camera. There we go. Turned out pretty well. If you wanted to, you could add a little bow tie. I used the polka dot tool ribbon for her bow in her in her ears. If you wanted to, you could add a little bow tie down here. That would be cute. A little bow tie. Um, for her, I added a little piece of Velcro so that they could open the tree and inside her two Hershey Kisses. So we'll get a glue dot. And just put a couple of glue dots in the bottom. To hold those Hershey Kisses, that's really all it takes. Two Hershey Kisses just fit in there perfectly. I'll add some Velcro here. I find it's easier to go ahead and attach the Velcro to the piece and then bring it up and pinch it that way. And then just carefully, carefully take it apart. Then you know it's in the right spot. And of course, if you have a pom-pom or a cotton ball, just add a little pom-pom or a little cotton ball tail to the back. It'd be really cute. Um, I just added a little cotton ball to the back of this one. Some people, I've seen them put a little flower underneath the cotton ball just to kind of set it off. That looks really cute. I hope you've enjoyed these projects. I hope you have a great Easter and lots of fun with your friends and family. If uh, you like my video, please click like and share. All the products I've used are available from my online store. They're copyrighted by uh, Stampin' Up. All you have to do is click on the Shop Now link above, and if you don't have a Stampin' Up demonstrator, I'd love to be yours. Thank you for joining me for Coffee and a Card today. Be sure to ink it up and send a blessing to someone today. Bye.